Welcome to my series of videos on mathematics for economists. In this video I would like to talk about linear functions on vector spaces in continuation of the earlier video where I introduced vector spaces, uh, vectors and matrices and uh, linear independence and so forth. Let me begin with a review of what a function is. Um, so I'm going to introduce two sets of numbers x and y. Later on I'm going to replace these by vector spaces, but right now we can stay very general and they can be real, complex, natural, or whatever kind of numbers. And then we define a relation as any rule of association between elements of x and elements of y. For example, less than is a relation. For any element in x, let's call it a, There may be potentially infinitely many elements y in y such that y is less than a. function or mapping is a particular relation where each element of x is assigned one and only one element of y. Then we have some language. x is called the domain of the function. We're mapping to y, which is called the codomain. It's called a function f. Then we can write the signature of the function as f maps from x to y. These are the sets. And then we have the elements. And for the association of the elements, we use the arrow with a bar on the left-hand side. So lowercase x is an element of uppercase x, and lowercase y is an element of uppercase y. And y, of course, can also be written as f of x, maybe a bit more familiar, where f of x is called the image, and x is called the pre-image. For example, I can consider the function that maps from the real numbers to the non-negative real numbers. And that assigns to x the number e to the x. And of course I can also use the high school shorthand f of x is e of x, but the shorthand of course doesn't say anything about the domain and codomain and possible restrictions on those. Then I can introduce three fundamental 
concepts in the classifications of functions. That is, injectivity, surjectivity, and bijectivity. Also called one to one, on two, and one to one, and on two. Injectivity means that if I take two elements of the domain which are distinct, x is not equal y, it follows that the images are also distinct, f of x is not equal f of y. So visualized, say we have three elements in x and say we have five elements in y, injectivity means that two different elements in x always are mapped to two different elements in y. And the third element in X then is, of course, also mapped to a third different element in Y. But it can very well be that there are elements in Y that do not have a pre-image. Surge activity, or 2, means that all elements of Y have pre-images, and they have at least one. in x. So for all elements in y there is an element in x such that f of x is equal to y. Even more symbolic and a bit terse and usually I don't use this notation but now is a good opportunity to introduce you to it for all, often symbolized by an upside down A, for all Y and Y. There is often symbolized by a left right flipped capital E. There is an X in X such that colon F of X is Y. Visualized Let's say we have five elements in X and three elements in Y this time. The point is all elements in Y have at least one pre-image. That is, I must have arrows going to all elements in Y. But it is very well possible that two different elements in X are mapped to the same element in Y. Finally, bijectivity is injectivity one to one and surjectivity on two, which means that for every element. In Y, there is one and only one, exactly one, pre image in X. Symbolically, for all Y and Y. There is exactly one symbolized by an exclamation mark behind the existence contour. There is exactly one X in capital X such that F of X is Y.
visualized. Let's say now that we have three elements on either side, all elements in Y are being mapped to, and two different, any two different elements in X are mapped to two different elements in Y. Then you can see very intuitively that only bijective functions have inverse functions. The inverse f to the minus 1, pronounced f inverse, is the function that goes from the codomain of the original function to the domain of the original function, and it assigns to the image of x under f, the pre-image. Linearity. A function from x to y is called linear. If the following holds. Two things. Additivity. Additivity. This means that if I take two elements in X and I look at the function value of the sum, this is equal to the sum of the function values. Second, homogeneity. If I take a number and an element in X and I look at the multiple of the element and then the function value of the multiple of the element. This is equal to the multiple of the function value of the element. These two properties constitute linearity. Examples. The function 1 half x clearly is linear, which I can very quickly verify by convincing myself that indeed the function value of the sum of two elements is the sum of the function values, and that the function value of the multiple of an element is indeed the multiple of the function value. The function, this was a linear number, the function 2 plus 1 half x is nonlinear. So this is a counter example. That may be a bit surprising because in everyday parlance we often refer to functions like this also as linear, but that's a bit sloppy. Um, if you, for example, consider the function value of 1 plus 1, which is the function value of 2. This would be 2 plus 1 half times 2, this is 3. Then compare this with the sum of the function value of 1. What is the function value of 1? 2 plus 1 half times 1 is 2.5. 2.5 plus 2.5 is 5. These two are clearly not the same. So the function is nonlinear. However, if I define a new function g of x, which is f plus a constant, and the constant here is minus 2, then this function is linear. And for functions that satisfy this, we say that the functions are affine linear. And in everyday parlance, we often swallow the affine. But strictly, 
affine function, affine linear functions are not linear. More natural for you may be x to the power of n, where n is not equal to 1, is of course not. Okay. That was injectivity, bijectivity, surjectivity, and linearity. One more thing about linearity. If we have two vector spaces now, and we consider a linear function between these vector spaces. Then we often we often condense additivity and uh, homogeneity in one equation. Then, if I consider the function value of a larger linear combination, as we have seen in the last video, where the ri are real numbers and the vi are elements of v, then bilinearity of the function, this is equal to the sum from 1 through n over ri times the function values of the vi's. In other words, linear functions respect linear combination. All these elements I'm now going to bring together in the central inside. The central inside is the following. I'm looking at two specific vector spaces, Rn and Rm. And I consider a linear function from Rn to Rm. I take a vector x in the domain, well, the domain we set is Rn, and let y be f of x in the codomain. Since, as we have seen last time in the last video on vector spaces, I can write the vector x as the linear combination of the standard basis vectors where the linear coefficients are just the entries in x. The i's are standard basis vectors. e1 is 1, 0, and the rest 0. E2 is 0, 1, 0, and the rest all 0, and so on. And since, as we have seen, linear functions respect linear combinations, so f of x is f of this linear combination of the standard basis vectors is bilinearity the linear combination of the function values of the standard basis vectors. We can write y which is the function value of fx, is 
and this is the central insight, the product of a matrix with a vector. What is the matrix and what is the vector? The matrix consists of the images of the standard basis in its colors. And the vector consists of the linear coefficients, so the entries in x. But the vector that consists of the entries in x, of course, is just x. Let's call this matrix A. It is an element of, well, we know it has n columns. So it is something times n. How many rows are there? Well, f maps from rn to rm. So an image under f has m entries. So the images of the standard basis vectors are elements in rm. And so we have m rows. We have an m by n matrix. In words, the central insight is any linear function from Rn to Rm can be identified with a matrix A in Rm by n and the mapping from x from the element x to the element y is obtained by matrix multiplication of y is a times x. This means the theory of linear functions on vector spaces is the theory of matrix multiplications with vectors. And therefore, when we theorize about linear functions on vector spaces, we theorize one-to-one -one about matrices. And that's why linear algebra is the theory of linear functions on vector spaces. We see here a recipe, a cookbook recipe for the construction of a matrix. And the cookbook recipe is put the images of the bases in the columns. All right. Start a new sheet. I am now going to talk about the kernel and the image of a linear function. We consider a function from Rn to Rm that is linear. Then we define the kernel 
vector f as the set of vectors in Rn in the domain that is being mapped to zero. Very simple. So schematically we're mapping from Rn to Rm. Of course I have infinitely many uh, elements in each but I'm now going to to draw a cartoon of these infinitely many elements. So let's say infinity is 5. And one of them, the first one say here, is the zero element. Then I can have the situation, so each point here, of course now since we're in vector spaces, each point represents a vector. And the 5 represent infinitely many, actually uncountably many. Um, but I hope that you uh, that you catch my drift. Uh, I can have the situation that several elements in the domain are being mapped to the zero vector, and other elements are being mapped to non-zero vectors. Then the set, the subset of elements in the domain that is being mapped to zero is the kernel. Sometimes also called null space. The set of vectors in Rm in the co-domain that possess a pre-image in the domain is called the image. If we have again uncountable infinity cartoonized by a few dots and we call one the zero element and say we have a non-trivial kernel there are some vectors that are being mapped to zero but we also have a number of vectors that are not being mapped to zero well, let's give it one more here. Then the set of vectors that possess a free image are the image, and the set of vectors that does not have pre images, therefore, are not elements of the image. Okay, so note that the kernel is a subset of the domain and the image is a subset of the codomain. Let's now consider this matrix that we found. Rm by n that characterizes the linear function. Then the kernel is the solution space of the linear system of equations a of x is equal to zero, right? Because it consists of all the elements 
x that are being mapped to 0. And being mapped to 0, as we saw, is tantamount to resulting in 0 in the matrix multiplication of a times x. On the other hand, the image consists of the elements in Y such that Y has a pre-image under F since F is characterized by multiplication of the matrix A we find an element x such that a times x is y. This means that a times the linear combination of the standard basis vectors xi, ei, is equal to bilinearity, the linear combination of xi times A E I. A E I, this is the matrix A times the ith standard basis vector. If you want, you can now take a pencil and paper and do the matrix multiplication of any given matrix A with the ith standard basis vector, and you will find that this returns the ith column of the matrix and so the image is the linear span as you can see here is the linear span of all the columns of A. So we can write the image of F is the linear span, whose notation I introduced in the video before, of the columns of A. The dimension of the image, remember from the last video that the dimension of the vector space, we have not strictly verified that the image is a vector space, you can do this, but the dimension of a vector space is given by the number of the basis vectors dimension of the image which is the dimension of the linear span is called the rank of F and thereby also of A, of the matrix. This need not necessarily be N. Yeah? This is only N of all the vectors here, A, E, 1, A, E, 2, dot, 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 A, E, N, are linearly independent. This may or may not be the case. If um, the sum of the vectors are, or if this set of vectors is linearly dependent, then the rank may be smaller than N. So this is the rank of A. Let me write this what I let me write this down what I just said. So if all columns of A are linearly independent, then the rank n, but if the vectors 
AE1 to AEN are linearly dependent then the rank is smaller than n. This leads us to the rank formula. Let v1 through vr be a basis of the kernel of f, of the kernel of f. We extend this basis to v1 through vr, this is the basis of the kernel, vr plus 1 through vn to a basis of all of rn. And we consider the images of those new vectors from the extension and we call them W1 is the image of VR plus 1, W2 is the image of VR plus 2, and WN minus R is the image of VN. For any x in the domain Rn, such that y is f of x is not equal to 0, so this means an x that is not in the kernel, that is not being mapped to 0, we have that x can be written as a linear combination of the bases with linear coefficients, let's call them c1 through cn, c1 plus, excuse me, c1 times v1 plus c2 times v2 plus dot 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 plus cr times vr, this is the kernel part, this would be mapped to zero, so since x is not being mapped to zero, more has to come, but in general a vector is always a linear combination of the basis vectors plus cn times vn. And f of x, which is f of c1 v1 plus dot 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 plus cn vn, is equal to bilinearity of f c1 times f of v1 plus dot 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 plus cr times f of vr plus cr plus 1 times f of vr plus 1 plus dot 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 plus cn times f of vn. And now these guys here are all equal to 0 because v1 through vr are a basis of the kernel and this means in particular that these are elements of the kernel and so they are being mapped to zero. And this means that f of x is actually just the tail This, by our agreement here, is CR plus 1 W1 plus dot 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 plus CN W 
n minus r. And this is not equal to 0. I deduct from that that the image of f is the linear span of these image vectors from the extension of the basis w1 through wn minus r. But are the w1s through wn minus r also linearly independent? Can I call it a basis? Let's assume the opposite. Assume they are dependent. Then we can find a linear combination A1 times W1 plus A2 times W2 plus dot 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 plus A n minus R times Wn minus R equal to 0, where not all of the A1, A2, An minus R are equal to 0. This is, by the definition of the Ws, A1 times F of V R plus 1 plus dot 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 plus An minus R times F of Vn. By linearity, this is f of a1 v r plus 1 plus dot 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 plus a n minus r v n. And this is equal to 0, which means which means that a1 v r plus 1 plus da 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 plus a n minus r times v n is zero and is therefore sorry this is not equal to zero f of the linear combination is equal to zero and therefore the linear combination is an element of the kernel of f. If it is an element of the kernel of f, then it has a representation as a linear combination of the basis of the kernel of f. The basis of the kernel of f were the first r vectors. So I can find coefficients b such that a1 vr plus 1 plus da 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 plus a n minus r vn is equal to b1, these are the coefficients I can find, b1, v1, plus dot dot, plus br, vr. Or, in other words, a1, vr plus 1, plus dot dot dot, plus a n minus r, vn, minus b1, v1, minus dot dot, minus br, vr, is equal to 0. Now, we had, however, extended the first r vectors to a basis. So v1 through vn is a basis of rn and therefore linearly independent. By the definition of linear independence this means that all these coefficients a1 minus b1 to minus b r must be equal to 0 because only then can I represent a linear combination of linearly independent vectors here that would give me the 0 vector. This means that indeed w1 through Wn minus R is a basis 
of the image. And therefore, the dimension of the image of f, or the rank of f, plus the dimension of the kernel of f is equal to the dimension of Rn. The dimension of the image, we have n minus r elements. The dimension of the kernel, those were r elements, is equal to the dimension of n, which is n, of the dimension of Rn, which of course is n. This is the rank form. Good enough for this video. Thanks for watching.